Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Jason White and this is Jason's Weird Reads and this is where I like to talk about books, mostly horror books, but I also talk about fantasy books and science fiction. If that sounds like your thing, please hit the subscribe button right down there below. Alright, so this is From the Hip number 12. If you don't know what From the Hip is, this is where I like to just, you know, shoot some shit with you. I talk about the books I'm reading, the books I want to read, just some life stuff. And basically a, a channel update. So thanks for joining me. Um, this one, however, is going to lean heavily on uh, my recent reads because I read, I read a fair amount over the Christmas holidays and into January. And I had a pretty interesting time with the books I was reading. So I, I, I really, really wanted to just gab about what I'm reading. And, and then we'll get into some more personal stuff later. So um, I split this up into a few different uh, sections here. I have uh, uh, DNF'd, books I did not finish, uh, books I'm, I've read, and books I'm reading right now, and uh, what I'm looking forward to reading. So I wanted to start off with the DNF'd books because I don't feel that I talk enough about the books I DNF and or why I DNF them. And it's not always a negative reason for me to DNF it. Sometimes I'll just stop reading a book because it's one, sometimes I'm just exploring it. I'll read like a chapter or two to see if, if I am interested in reading it now. And I do find that it is good to read, and but I just don't want to continue. I'm sure there's uh, a lot of avid readers out there who do that. I see all the time on BookTube where people try a chapter. They're, trying a chapter is a, a, like a, a type of BookTube video where... Uh, I, if you watch a lot of BookTube, you've probably seen them, where... Uh, the booktuber will sit down with like to say five books and they'll decide what book they're going to read next by trying a chapter from those five books and they'll pick their favorite one so but there's also that dnf that that negative i hated this book type <laughs> type deal i don't think i had any serious i hated this book with uh, any of these dnfs they're just i'm pretty sure all of them were just not not right now um so i started with uh the Broken Sword. I was I was listening to that on on audiobook, and it just wasn't vibing with me. For one thing, I didn't know it was Portal Magic or Portal Magic Portal Fantasy, and I'm not. I don't know why, but I'm not very big on Portal Fantasy books. Um, I I will read them, but sometimes when I learn uh, that it's a Portal Fantasy book and I'm not really in the mood for a Portal Fantasy book, then I'm just going to be like, eh, you know, I'm not going to read this book. Uh, I was originally reading this for the uh, uh, February fantasy stories uh, read-along sort of or read-a-thon that's going on I'll put the links down there I did a video for that I'll put that up here too if I remember uh, but yeah it just wasn't vibing with me and so I did end up reading something else for that and it's gonna come up very soon I also put down swords and devil tree by Fritz leader this book just kind of hit me a little off guard and I've talked about this uh, especially in my announcement and TBR video for the February fantasy stories uh, read-along I just it there is just a lot of weird sexual jokes <laughs> uh, about rape which I guess isn't sexual but you know war and rape and also uh, uh, there seemed to be a lot of incest going on, and I just like, whoa, whoa, I, uh, let's step back a bit, eh? I'm, I'm just not in the mood for this kind of thing right now, and I don't know if I'll ever be, so, if anything, that, that would be kind of one I'm, I don't plan on going back to, and Refraction by Wick Welker, Wick was nice enough to send me a copy of his book, Refraction, and I read the first few chapters, and I just, I couldn't vibe with the characters, the characters felt very dry, and, and paper you know like cardboard cutouts and I think maybe it was just that kind of concept just the characters kind of hit me off guard and I just really didn't want to continue reading it I was I was kind of bored to be honest with you um, and also it skips b between time periods between like 1986 and um, far in the future 2155 and that kind of threw me off guard too. I, I'm beginning to think that I need to start reading the uh, the synopsis on the back again before I start reading books. I stopped doing that because I didn't like being spoiled. 
but I think that I need to uh, let myself be spoiled a little bit more. So I'll probably re be returning to Refraction again. And thanks again to Wick for sending me a signed copy. I really appreciate that. And I hope to get back to that book again sometime soon. All right, the books that I, I read. Now, um, during, like, right during Christmas, um, I was sick. Uh, I don't think it was COVID, but it's I got co uh, the test for COVID twice, and both times it came back negative. So I don't know, but I was I was really sick. This was during the Christmas holidays. To help myself get through that, I decided to read Running with the Devil. It's a book by Noel Monk, and it, it pretty much chronicles the first four albums of uh, Van Halen. You want to talk about a coped out journey, a journey filled with cocaine and egos and weirdness. <laughs> I wanted to talk about this book a little bit because Noel Monk was their road manager to start off with and then he became their band manager and they let him go uh, in 1985, same year that David Lee Roth left. And I can't help, although this was well written and it was a uh, it was really fun to read. I mean, I, I was a big Van Halen fan uh, 10, 20 years ago. Well, not 20. Yeah, about 20 years ago when I was a kid. I, I really enjoyed Van Halen, especially their albums 1984 and uh, 5150. Um, those are my favorite Van Halen albums. I can't help but that feel that this book isn't a little bit of a, a bit of a jab at Van Halen for having let him go in the manner in which they did <laughs> because there's there's certain things that he tells about touring with the band as often as he did and he often paints himself in a very he, he's pretty much the infallible hero um he you know he does almost no wrong although i will admit when it, when he is in the wrong he will admit it within his story but you have to wonder how much is, is real um there's, there's certain things that like Eddie Van Halen did or David Lee Roth did. Um, there's a, a certain nightmare sequence that Alex Van Halen, the drummer, had that you just have to wonder if it's true or if he's just trying to make them look bad because they hurt him. And so that's understandable. He, even at the end, he, he tells, because this book was published in like, I don't know the exact date, I think it was 2018, 17, somewhere around there. There is a, a disclaimer at the end where Noel Monk admits that he had to wait a certain amount of times, like 20 or 30 years, before he was allowed to uh, sell movie rights or write a book uh, w regarding his experiences with, with Van Halen. And that was uh, a part of the agreement after he was fired that he had to sign. So it's an interesting book. I highly recommend, if you're a fan of Van Halen, I, I recommend reading it just for those first, like, however long it was, like six years, seven years, until 1985 when the band became Van Hagar. <laughs> um, which, you know, isn't a bad Van Hagar. They had a good couple of albums, but they were nothing compared to, you know, Van Halen. Of course, Van Halen is Van Halen, whether Hagar's in it or not. Sammy Hagar is a good singer. Uh, but, you know, the dynamics changed once he changed, uh, got into the band. But that's not Sammy Hagar's fault. If you think about it, it's uh, Eddie Van Halen's fault because he was wanting to take the band in that direction for a long time. But that's neither here nor there. Anyway, um, it's a good book. I, I, I recommend reading it. There's a lot of good stories in it. I think, even though I think it was written, maybe for him to express himself and what he went through, I think he put some things in there that he didn't have to. <laughs> or maybe that didn't even happen. I don't know. It's fun, though. I read Guns of Dawn by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Now, every time in the winter, I, I get this itch to read fantasy. This happened to me last year. And uh, it also happened when I started my uh, Wheel of Time journey a couple of years ago. And that one lasted all year, uh, a year and a half fully. Um, I would like to be able to keep reading fantasy all year long, honestly. Uh, I don't know why I lose interest in it around March or, you know, April. But I guess we'll see this year. I've been reading some fantasy, and this was the first, I think, uh, this year. And I enjoyed my time with Guns of Dawn. I started to 
lose interest about halfway point when it should have started getting really good in my opinion is when it started getting kind of bad for me because you have this main character there's one thing i liked is the main character is a woman and she gets conscripted to go fight in the war that's going on which kind of shows you just how poorly her country is doing not that women can't fight in wars it's very typical in history that uh, women didn't fight in wars and when they were conscripted to fight in wars because they were also conscripting children and old men which happens in this book too but I, I just felt that the the book kind of started to lose steam a little bit in terms of reality and uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that because I don't want to spoil anything it is overall a really good book but uh, I just wanted more from it to be honest with you I reread Binti next by Nettie Akorafor and the first time I read this book, I didn't like it. I, I felt like it was just a skeleton of a plot. Uh, it was it was like maybe first draft material without anything expanded upon. Um, second time I read it, though, I enjoyed it much more. I listened to the audiobook, and I think that's what made a huge difference. Because it felt like somebody telling me a story uh, instead of me reading, looking for more words, more of a something to seek, sink my teeth into um, when you're listening to it you didn't really need all that extra stuff and so that's a very interesting uh, dynamic that I found with that book so if you ever read Binti and you felt it was lacking try the audiobook it might might change your mind I next read and now I read this on on uh, on my Kindle that's the Hail Bay by Priscilla Bettis I hope I pronounced your last name correctly i read this book uh, i didn't well i knew she was a writer but i didn't know she was going to be coming out with anything um and if you don't know who she is she's a very big supporter and commenter on booktube she's been commenting on my channel for a good couple of years solid and she never misses a video i don't think and i see her in the comments section on many other videos of other booktubers and so she's she she's out there and she's writing and the hail bay is uh is a very interesting story because this book um well we follow the main character is a woman who rents an old farmhouse out in the country um she decided that she just needs to get away from it all for i had a light fall on me there all right so <laughs> the main character in the hail bay uh, is a woman who's decided to uh, get away from it all because she's been going through a very difficult time in her life. She's suffered four or five miscarriages in a row and her boyfriend or husband just left her because not because she's having uh, miscarriages but because he can't understand why it's bothering her so much and he thinks that she shouldn't be bothered by it at all which is just awful. <laughs> um, so she moves to this very rural type, uh, you know, backwoods uh, farming country, and she finds herself kind of involved with a cult. Uh, that's all. I'm, it's a, it's a short story basically. It's not really a novella length or or no, definitely not novel. It's I think forty four pages long. I, I breezed through it in a night. It's it's very entertaining. What I liked about it most is the blend of subgenres that she uses within these uh, horror stories. Uh, or this horror story. It's it's got it's, it's a blend of folk horror, uh, southern horror, and uh, there's definitely some weird horror in there as well, which I appreciated all of it. I highly recommend you checking that out. Like I said, it, you can read it for free if you're on Kindle Unlimited, or I think it's like 99 cents to buy. It's very quick and it's uh, it's very very well done. So I was happy to read that. I also read. A Wizard of Earthsea. Now I read this again for the uh, fantasy, uh, February fantasy uh, stories that's going uh, all throughout February. And you can check out the Bookish Bryant's videos on that. They've been doing some live streams. So I read, I decided to reread A Wizard of Earthsea uh, for the first prompt. And that's the classic fantasy, uh, something that was published before 1971. And you know, the weird thing is I, I decided to listen to this on audiobook where the first time I read it. The first time I read it, I loved it. But the second time, I didn't like it so much because I had a lot of trouble 
paying attention to the audiobook. And it that was like a huge frustration for me. I didn't enjoy my experience listening to it. And I don't know, the only thing I can think of is just because I struggled so much paying attention to it. And I can only uh, put that down to the writing style because it's written with heavy exposition and some passive language too that uh, literary styles often adapt. So if I'm going to reread that one again, I'm going to need to do it with my eyes uh, because I, I find the passive uh, sentence structure very difficult to listen to when when reading audiobook. So that was a disappointment because I really enjoyed the first time I read it. So I was really looking forward to reading it again, obviously, but it just didn't work out for me all that well. So um, instead of... Um, Instead of the Broken Sword, which was the second category for that, uh, or the second prompt category, for the uh, February Fantasy Stories uh, read-along, uh, the second category being Sword and Sorcery Stories, uh, I decided instead to go with uh, Blood Song, not Blood Song, Many Are the Dead by Anthony Ryan, which is a prequel novella to his Raven's, uh, Raven's Shadow trilogy of books. And I really enjoyed it. It's like, uh, the one thing I would say is that I would not suggest if you're going to read that series to maybe not start with that book because there's some certain uh, things, uh, just culture of how those people lived um, and, you know, their culture that you might not understand quite so well. And you might get the wrong impression about the wildlife because the story is sort of a bit of a siege story. The creatures that are doing the siege are all giant animals giant uh, tigers and bears <laughs> and so you might get the impression that that's what the, the enemies are going to be within the storyline. The reason why they're even where they are is because there's a plague uh, called the Red Hand that is sweeping the nation and so our main character in this is a, a smaller character in the first book of the series proper who goes to find a certain plant that will that's basically a cure for for the Red Hand, and it's only found in this certain area. And while they're there, they get attacked by these creatures. And so it's a good book. I really enjoyed it, and I recommend it. But I, I would say maybe read the, the trilogy first. And I, I went straight from there and moved on to Blood Song, also obviously by Anthony Ryan, which is the first book of the Raven Shadow uh, trilogy. And I really enjoyed this book too. What I really enjoyed about it was the whole... Uh, military school aspect. Our main character, he's dropped off at the, this military school, uh, the Sixth Order, <laughs> and uh, he's just left there by his, his dad. His dad, uh, oh, he just lost his mom. His mom died, and soon after, his dad just drops him off at this military school, and so pretty pissed off about that, as I would be. He swears off his family. The whole Sixth Order thing is you don't have any family anymore. Your family is the Sixth Order. And so Valen, I think his name is Valen, Almer or something like that. He, uh, I'm terrible with names, but he, he swears off his family after that. He's like, I have no father. I have no nothing. He's, you know, understandably angry. And, but he, he kind of hangs on to this throughout the rest of the story. And I really enjoyed the, uh, the military school aspect. Uh, but once they grad, I mean, you know, there's some deadly tests they put these kids through. <laughs> I, I didn't like it as much after they leave the the school because they jump around uh in time not back and forth but you know you're here doing this campaign for a while and then you jump ahead and you're doing this and if you're not paying attention really hard because there's no dates or anything given uh you'll miss and what's going on and you get a little confused at least i did um and another complaint i have about the book are the side characters uh none of them have any real depth to them or serious personality and that for me was a big problem the only one who seemed to have any real personality was the main character and uh, the other ones you could just kind of tell they're just there to be there uh, I wanted more from the side characters and uh, a little bit more from the plot honestly I am going to continue the series I did kind of uh, stop at that book because uh, I started the second book and I kind of DNF'd it after the first chapter because I just like I can't do any more of this. <laughs> I'm also reading Ship of Fools by Richard Paul Russo. Now I this book came to my attention from watching Rachel 
from the Shades of Orange. Uh, she's talked about this book a couple of times, and uh, I just really like the premise of it. You have this uh, spaceship that's sort of looking for a world to colonize. I don't think they necessarily have a plan. It seems to me that they just sort of go to one place and then something goes wrong, so they go looking for another one. And they've the ship has been out in space looking for a place for centuries. I think their goal, actually, because it's it's they're they're all Catholic, they're sort of like missionaries in a sense, in that they're trying to uh, bring the word of God to other planets, and and they haven't really had any success with that. <laughs> um, things I like about this book is the atmosphere. It's uh, it's basically a horror science fiction space horror. And I really want to get into more space horror books. So there's like it's really dreadful atmosphere that this book kind of leaks dread, dreary situations. I really like the, uh, the sort of political thing that's going on within the ship. Um, the captain is losing grace with his people. And the bishop uh, is trying to pretty much usurp the captain. Maybe even, actually, no, he's outright trying to take over the ship from the captain. And he's pretty much got all the poor people who live below decks, basically, all the workers for the rich people on his side. He even has the rich people on his side. And so it's looking pretty perilous for the captain. And they get it while they're in space. They get a signal from a planet that they haven't visited yet. And they're pretty sure that everyone on the planet is dead, but they're going there anyway. To me right there, that's fascinating. Uh, the things I don't like about it are there is a little bit of black character in this. Like the captain, he, you kind of wish that he was a stronger person to be up against the bishop, who is actually pretty well drawn. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the captain needs to be a little weak, and that's why he's uh, in the position that he's in. But I, I wish that he was just a little bit more of a, uh, I don't know, a little tougher, I guess. Um, and also when they reach the planet, there's no wonder or awe at the fact that they've reached this planet and although there's a signal that the ship is receiving you're pretty sure that everyone on the planet is dead you think that you'd stare at the planet for a while maybe talk about it with your uh, shipmates all the people who are going down to the planet instead they just go and they're like oh we're here ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. and there's like nothing new about the planet it's just like another earth it would have been interesting if there was a uh, maybe something different about the planet. I've not done it yet. And I'm definitely, I'm pretty sure I'm going to finish this book because there's a lot of things that are intriguing me. Uh, but I wish, I just wish there was a little bit more in the characters and perhaps the world building a little bit, especially when it comes to this planet. I've just started Tales from the Typewriter by Mark Allen Gunnels. This is a short story collection with a wraparound and it's a pretty interesting wraparound. Uh, I'm going to talk about this much more in depth a little later because I'm going to be having Mark Allen Gunnels on my channel again in the near future to talk about this book and a novel he's releasing this year because this guy can't stop writing. <laughs> uh, but so far, I'm, I'm only in like the second story. Uh, I'm not very far into it at all, but I'm enjoying myself so far. I'm also reading this. I think, you know, there's some books on this list here of what I'm reading. I've been reading for a couple months now, and this might be one of them too because there's only certain times that I can actually sit down and read it. The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Now this book, uh, this book is pretty brutal. Um, the one thing I really like about this book are honestly the giants. <laughs> there's uh, two giants that I've been introduced to. One um, was sort of taken down by almost like a hunting type situation. And that kind of broke my heart because these giants, they do have at least a little bit of uh, intelligence. They're almost like, well, giant children. And you have these people just stabbing at it and it's just trying to defend itself. It, it was kind of heartbreaking. And then the second giant, um, one of the main characters in here, Varg, I believe his name is, had to fight uh, the giant in a ring. And this giant's fully, fully on board with fighting people <laughs> all day long. And to get his place within this uh, certain sort of militia. And uh, so th there's some really interesting things going on in this book. The one thing, uh, Orca is a character, a female warrior type character. And it's set up that she's, uh, I might be spoiling things here, but I'm, only, I'm not very far into it. I'm only like 150 pages in. Um, it's set up that she's going to be losing her child in one way or another 
and this is going to set her off on her path. That's that's hard for me to read because, you know, I have a son. I don't want to lose him either. Uh, but you're reading about somebody who's going to be... I mean, I haven't read that part yet, but it's definitely leading up to that. I mean, there's so much foreshadowing for this. It's, it's, it's obvious. But this is a really good book so far. I'm enjoying my time. I'm still reading with Crystal from Fiber Artsy. I'm still reading this giant book, House of Chains, and we are going through it very slowly, and I really actually appreciate the speed in which we are reading this book. Um, I forget what chapter I'm on. I think I'm on chapter like eight, and it is, uh, this is uh, very different, and you know, that's saying something, because most of Stephen Eric, every time that you talk about Stephen Erickson, you talk about how different his books are from, from other books. This is no exception whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, but this book is different from the other books until it's not, and then it gets to be the same. What I'm talking about is um, you follow a character who uh, goes through a journey. They want to conquer a land, and there's like two or th there's three of them. And they go out and they, they do their, uh, uh, you know, attacking villages and taking down other armies. And, and you follow them for like 200 pages. And then, and then you're back with people from the past books, like Dead House Gates, uh, pretty much that crew. And everyone has, all those old characters, they all have different names. And it's told, you're told that they all have different names, but you have to wonder why. Why? Is, that, is it really necessary to change their names when you're just getting used to their names in the first place? This book is frustrating, man. And uh, it, I've heard that this is not a favorite among fans and I can see why uh, but you know it's still it's still Erickson it's still fun it's still something that you have to really think about while you're reading it I want to thank Crystal for sticking with me on this and going at this slow place in which we're going actually I'm pretty much following her pace because she'll read a, a chapter and then she'll discuss it what she just read on my discord and and then I'll I'll go read the chapter and I'll, I'll I'll respond with my thoughts on the chapter, so pretty interesting book. And I am still reading, even though I was really enjoying this book, it kind of took a bit of a nosedive for me as well, because uh, there's just some weird things going on with the characters, uh, especially because you know the Alphabet Squadron. They uh, this book just got kind of weird for me. I really enjoyed the first half. Um, but then the new squadron, which is the Alphabet Squadron, uh, they form the biggest uh, issue that they're having right now in the book is uh, bonding. So instead of doing what they would normally do in real life, which means going out and drinking and causing mayhem, they have to share their personal stories and get all personal with each other. And to me, that's just, it's kind of silly, honestly. But I'm still enjoying this book. I, I wanted to get back to the sort of gritty nature of the first half of the book. I'm, what page am I on here? I'm on page 340. Means I'm, I'm getting there. I'm almost there. So I'm sticking with it. I'm just taking a dreadfully long time getting to the end. Now the books I'm looking forward to getting into. Now I just purchased on my Audible, with my credit, I, I got Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is another... Um, a space horror book, and it's it's one that uh, also intrigues me in that uh, involves a, an abandoned, an old abandoned spaceship and a crew that goes investigating it. It's been described as a haunted house in space, <laughs> and I'm all for that. I uh, really need to check out this uh, book. I'm going to be starting it soon, I think, uh, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. I was just watching Petrick Leo's uh, January wrap-up, and he started talking about um, how he didn't really like this book, where a lot of other booktubers, this is like a booktube darling. And I, I was reading this book, and I didn't really like it either. The reasons why I didn't like this book is that none of the, a lot of, a lot of the reasons why this is a booktube darling, uh, they talk about like uh, the banter between the main characters, and they talk about some other things. And what, when I read this book about three or four years ago, I, I didn't find any of that. It was like, it was the story was kind of boring, and there was no banter between the characters. 
And so uh, Patrick, he put this series down. So did I, uh, honestly. I did it like three or four years ago. I don't know how long ago it was he put his, uh, you know, Theft of Swords down or the series down. But he decided to pick it back up. And he also suggested in his video to maybe start reading uh, the Ryria Chronicles instead of this uh, series first. Because he says that's where all those things that people talk about uh, when people on booktube are praising uh, these books. That's where it starts. And so I'm thinking that I might start there. Failing that, I might just restart this book again and uh, and plow through the series knowing that it, it does get better and Michael J. Sullivan finds his stride in which everyone fell in love with. And Because I just, you know, I, everyone loves this thing. I want to see what it is that they love and maybe fall in love with it myself. And also, I'm hoping to get to this book here, uh, The Magician, by, I'm going to butcher this, I know, by J.D. Santibanez, Santibanez, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but J.D. was uh, kind enough to send me this book, and uh, I believe he sent it through Amazon. This is, uh, let me read you the synopsis here. Uh, Geralt Pereira has a quiet life. He kills anyone without remorse as long as the price is right. But everything changes the night he meets his dead mother, who opens the doors to an un known world where angels and demons face each other in the oldest struggle of all time from that moment and surrounding surrounded by increasingly strange characters the hitman becomes paramount peace in the eternal balance of good and evil that sounds pretty interesting uh so i'm going to give this a go i don't know when but hopefully soon thanks again to jd for sending this to me and i apologize for butchering your name all right so that that's uh, my recent reads and what i'm going to read now um, you know, I just wanted to mention this, the new Star Wars, uh, series, The Book of Boba Fett. Now, that's, a, a lot of people are bitching about this series, and I don't know why, because I've enjoyed the whole ride. But when it came to the part where the Mandalorian returns and sort of hijacks the series for two episodes, man, that's just, like, that's just gold <laughs> right there. I, I'm absolutely enjoying my time. I'm recording this on Wednesday, and tonight... Well, actually, it's already out, and my video feed on on YouTube is, like, full of spoilers, so I've been trying to avoid all the titles. But, but yeah, it's Wednesday, so the final episode is out, and me and my son, we're going to watch it tonight. My son kind of said something funny about Star Wars the other day, and he says that Star Wars has some weirdness to it. And I've heard people say this before, and, you know, I think, honestly, they're right. There is weirdness to Star Wars, but that's okay. It just doesn't seem weird to me because I've watched it since I was like seven or eight, maybe even younger than that. So as for my channel, I uh, you may have noticed that uh, if you've listened to the podcast at all, the podcast version of this channel, I, uh, I kind of stopped doing the podcast over the Christmas break, and I do plan on getting back to it very shortly. I just needed to take a break because, as I said, I got very pretty sick over the, the Christmas holidays. And that's when I was like, okay, you know what, I'm going to take a break from doing that because I just want to be with my family, shoot a video here and there and put that up. But it takes an, quite a bit of extra time to do the podcast version as well. So I just wanted a break from it. And so that break's going to end soon. And so you're going to see some content flow on there, hopefully shortly. Um, so... Uh, also, I just want to mention that, you know, last year I think I kind of burnt myself out doing all those interviews that I did. I was at one point doing one every two weeks. Um, I'm going to take, not take a break from it, I'm going to cut back. I find I'm going to be doing this for a couple of reasons, um, and I think they're good reasons. Uh, one, they don't perform all that well. I need to figure out a different way of doing it so that maybe they do perform better. Um... When I'm, when I'm doing a live stream, I'm, I'm lucky to get maybe 20 viewers while we're watching. And then the video itself will reach about 100 to 200 views, depending on the person I'm talking to, within the next few weeks. And, you know, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. This is just one reason. Another reason is because, uh, like I said, it kind of burnt me out. I I enjoy doing it while, while I'm talking to the authors, but I kind of, you know, I don't like the work. 
that leads up to that interview. I don't want to burn myself out reading again like I kind of did at the end of last year where suddenly I just couldn't read short stories anymore. I'm still kind of in that short story slump, which Mark Allen Gunnels is kind of helping me get out of with his uh, <laughs> uh, stories from the typewriter uh, collection. But uh, so there are plans to do some interviews. Uh, Mark Allen Gunnels is one of them. Um, so there, it, these, this isn't going to go completely away. Basically what I want to do is I want to put my channel back to the way it was when I started. So my channel is more of a reaction to my reading habit rather than my reading habit being influenced by what I plan on doing with the channel. I, I kind of wanted this channel just to be a, a, a document of the things I read and maybe to help me read more. Uh, and it's certainly done that, but I just want to, I want to keep being a mood reader and just go explore when I need to explore. So that's why I'm not really doing, uh, you know, uh, reading read alongs or, uh, or, uh, you know, all that, you know, group reads and whatnot. I'm, I'm trying to stay away from that. There's some obviously that I'm participating in, but, uh, I think as we move forward, I'm going to be maybe stepping back from that or at least being very going to be you know doing some pretty critical choices in regards to that because i just need to you know my reading time has always been like a drug for me stephen king often says that uh, uh writing is his drug i would say that reading is my drug it's the ultimate escape and i don't want uh it to become a chore <laughs> otherwise all this will go away and i don't want that i'm enjoying my time here and uh, my time, definitely I'm enjoying my time reading. But I found myself kind of getting grumpy about reading last year. And I'm finding that I'm enjoying myself again now that there's very little obligations in the way. So, all right, thank you for uh, sticking with me this long. Uh, this video is, I don't know how long it is. It's probably going to be very long. So my apologies for that. But if you did stick this long, please leave me... Leave me a little ghosty down there in the darkness, and I'll leave you a ghosty in return. All right, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I hope you're all doing well out there. Keep being safe, keep being creative, and I'll catch you guys in the next bookish video.